concepts of relative clearance and urine to plasma ratios. This information will help us to solve problems about the reabsorption and secretion of various substances within the kidneys. Clearance is a term that refers to the ability of the kidneys to clear a substance from the blood. When a substance is excreted in the urine, a certain volume of fluid is freed or cleared of that substance. In this slide, we see a solute represented by a blue dot being filtered and secreted into the urine. Fluids are being represented by rectangles filled with water. Clearance is defined as the volume of plasma from which that substance is completely removed per unit time. It is measured in milliliters per minute. Renal clearance is not a measurement of the concentration of a solute in the plasma or urine. We will be examining the clearance of three substances today, glucose, inulin, and PAH, or paraaminohepuric acid. In the nephron, each of these substances enters into the glomerulus and is freely filtered from the glomerular capillaries. With a normal filtration fraction, about one-fifth of the renal plasma flow passes into Bowman space and the proximal tubule. The other four-fifths of the renal plasma flow passes into the efferent arteriole and the paratubular capillaries. Let's begin by looking at the movement of inulin within the nephron. Inulin is a 6,000 molecular weight polysaccharide. It is used medically in renal function tests. Inulin is readily filtered at the glomerulus, but is not secreted or reabsorbed. Thus, all of the filtered inulin remains in the tubule and is excreted in the body. The water that was filtered with inulin is reabsorbed into the paratubular capillaries. Consequently, the clearance of inulin can be used as a measure of the glomerular filtration rate, or GFR. Glucose is a monosaccharide with a molecular weight of 180. Like inulin, glucose is freely filtered at the glomerulus, and one-fifth of the glucose passes into the tubule. In low concentration, however, the entire filtered load of glucose is reabsorbed into the paratubular capillaries. PAH is the amide derivative of the amino acid glycine and paraaminobenzoic acid. PAH is used in the diagnostic testing of the kidney. Like inulin and glucose, PAH is freely filtered at the glomerulus and one-fifth of the PAH passes into the tubule. In low concentration, all of the PAH is secreted in one pass through the paratubular capillaries. Consequently, the clearance of PAH can be used as a measure of the renal plasma flow, or RPF. If we look at the final results for each of these three substances, they are rather different from one another. For inulin, one-fifth of the inulin is excreted from the tubule, and four-fifths of the inulin would remain in the plasma. For glucose, there is no glucose present in the urine, and all of the glucose remains in the plasma. For PAH, all of the PAH in the plasma ends up in the urine. The patterns of transport we have just seen, however, were only characteristic of low concentrations of each of the solutes. What happens when the concentration levels within the plasma increase? As the plasma concentration of inulin increases, the filtered and non-filtered components increase in the same proportion. Thus, the fraction of inulin in the urine and plasma does not change. Consequently, the clearance of inulin is independent of the inulin concentration within the plasma. As the plasma concentrations of glucose increase, the filtered load of glucose also increases.
As the glucose plasma concentrations reach about 3 milligrams per milliliter, the glucose transporters become overwhelmed. Once the transport maximum of 360 milligrams per minute has been surpassed, some of the filtered glucose will remain in the tubule and be excreted in the urine. As the plasma concentration of PAH rises, the transport maximum of 72 milligrams per minute for secretion may be exceeded. At this point, some of the PAH will not be secreted as the blood passes through the paratubular capillaries. This PAH will remain in the plasma compartment. At extremely high concentrations of glucose or PAH, the clearance becomes closer to the clearance of inulin. This equation uses the urine to plasma ratios of a substance multiplied by the urine flow rate. Here we see the clearance equation for inulin, which is used to estimate the GFR. It can be mathematically useful to compare the clearance of substances to inulin, which is an index of filtration. This information can be used to determine whether a substance is undergoing net reabsorption or net secretion within the nephron. If we use the U to P ratios of two different substances, Note that the urine flow rate is in the numerator and the denominator. Since the urine flow rate would be the same for both substances, this value can be eliminated when we use the equations. Physiologists have used these ratios to develop the helpful skill shown here. Inulin would have a UP inulin concentration ratio value of 1. Inulin is an index of filtration and is neither reabsorbed nor secreted. Any substances that undergo net reabsorption would have a U to P ratio relative to inulin between 0 to 1. For example, at low glucose concentrations, the glucose to inulin UP ratio would have a value of 0. This indicates that 100% of the filtered load of glucose was reabsorbed into the paratubular capillaries. U to P ratios with values from 1 to 5 indicate that the solute is undergoing net secretion. Since the filtration fraction is normally one-fifth, the amount that any substance can be cleared over and above what is filtered would represent five times the filtered amount. For example, PAH has a value of five at low plasma concentrations. This indicates that 100% of the PAH was secreted as it passed through the paratubular capillaries. As the concentration of PAH in the systemic bloodstream increases, the U to P ratio would drop closer to 1. The U to P ratios can be used to determine whether a substance undergoes net reabsorption or secretion in the nephron. Let's consider the following example in which the urine and plasma values of an unknown substance X are given. Using the information shown, we can determine whether substance X undergoes net reabsorption or net secretion. We can also determine what percentage of substance X is reabsorbed or secreted. In order to determine whether substance X undergoes net reabsorption or secretion, we first divide the urine concentration of X by the plasma concentration of substance X, which is 1 milligram per milliliter. We then divide this number by the U to P ratio for inulin, which in this case is 60. This gives us an overall U to P ratio for substance X of 3. Looking at our scale, this indicates that substance X undergoes net secretion in the nephron. Furthermore, we can see that 50% of substance X is secreted into the nephron, since 3 is halfway between 1 and 5. This same system can be used to determine the net absorption or secretion of any substance in which the urine and plasma values are known.